Hi, my name is Andrea Isak and I am a software engineer in the C++ cross-platform team at Microsoft. I want to present today the support that we implemented in our VS and VS Code CMake extensions for presets version 6. Let's start with a quick reminder about what are the CMake presets. They are JSON files, which allow users to define in a robust way a set of command line options, cache or environment variables for various operations like configure, build and test. The fields ultimately translate into command line arguments towards tools that form the CMake build ecosystem, like CMake itself, CTest or CPAC. Concepts like build type, build directory, generator, and many others are recommended to be written in files like CMake presets and CMake user presets JSON instead of other legacy mechanisms like kits and variants. Kitware is constantly defining more formats and schemas to improve the developer experience, and we try our best to match this support in VS and VS Code. Let's look quickly over how Presets v6 looks like in the official Kitware documentation. Two new types of presets are introduced. Package presets, which produce an installation artifact via the CPAC tool, and workflow presets, which are able to execute a series of different configure, build, test, and package presets in a given order and following some rules. The package preset schema has many fields that are common with the other preset types like name, inherit, hidden, condition, vendor, vendor name, display name, description, environment, variables, configure preset, inherit configure environment. All of these function the exact same way. There are also fields that are new and which introduce new concepts specific to CPAC like package name, package version, package directory, or concepts that exist for other preset kinds but are applied in a different way for CPAC, like generators, configurations, config file, or output. But the basic approach of interpreting these fields is the same as for the previous versions. Depending on the values written in the CMake presets JSON file, the extension calculates the final CPAC command line that will be run when the package operation is invoked. And here is the workflow preset. Besides few general and obvious fields, the steps array is meant to define a sequence of configure, build, test, and package presets as part of a developer workflow. Here are the rules of a workflow. It must be associated with one configure preset which should be defined only as step one in the array and all the following presets must be associated themselves with this same configure preset. Now let's see some of the most common user scenarios for version 6 of the CMake presets in the CMake Tools VS Code extension. I chose this open source project HDF5 which represents a high-performance library and file format specification that implements the HDF5 data model. It had defined a complex set of presets, and we can see right away how this new support applies to a code base that is already using heavily all kinds of presets. The project defines many configure, build, test, package, and workflow presets. I also added temporarily some debug preset variations to be able to showcase particular scenarios in my demo. I will be focusing on the MSVC toolset with debug and release flavors, and since I am on a Windows system, I will define a zip package generator for CPAC. Here are also some other fields that are supported by the package preset schema. They are not necessarily needed by this project, but I thought they can be useful for us to see their impact on the final CPAC command line that we are going to generate. So here are different logging verbosity levels, various environment or cache variables, and the override settings icon notifies us that we defined additional arguments to the CPAC tool via the settings.
This project is already configured for MSVC, AMD64 debug, and it is entirely built to save some time. We are ready to invoke now the package command for the debug configuration. This is also triggering a build, same as running a test preset does. It should be quick though, since it is an incremental build. And packaging is done. Here is where the zip was created. Let's explore and see how it looks like. And this is the structure of the installation package. It's useful to inspect also the CPAC command line that we generated. All these parameters are coming from the package preset fields that we wrote in the presets file. And these additional arguments are coming from settings. Now it would be nice to be able with one command to run multiple processes of configure, build, test and package in any combination and order. Of course, while following the rules like one configure per workflow, configure must be first, and all steps must have the same configure preset associated as the configure preset of the first workflow step. The workflow presets are pretty straightforward to read. For example, the release workflow. Notice how all the steps are associated with the release configuration while my project is currently configured for debug. It is possible I run this workflow with one command and not lose the debug state of my project. Let's run the release workflow on top of a debug configured project. Under the covers, we temporarily set all the presets to the release counterparts specified by the workflow and at the end we restore everything to what it was. This is useful for developers when they need to produce retail binaries while developing in a debug state and also to orchestrate CI builds for CMake projects. For this repository, which is quite large, uh, this workflow can last a long time. The workflow finished, so now let's inspect the logging in the output channel to see the steps that were run. This is the configure that sets up the whole workflow. And here we are building the binaries. Then the workflow runs the test suite. And at the end, it runs CPAC to produce the final package. After producing the package, since we ran a um, RET workflow on top of a debug project, um, we restore the presets and the configuration state back to debug. Now let's explore how the presets v6 support looks like for a brand new project. The UI entry points are exactly the same as for the other configure, build and test presets. Adding a new preset, selecting one from all that should be visible, inheritance, the visibility settings in status bar or sidebar. All these work the same as for the previous versions and the other kinds of presets. We can add now some new package and workflow presets by using various UI entry points and predefined templates. I'm going to use the command palette and invoke the action of add package preset. Let's use the custom template to define a base package preset for all others to inherit from. Being a base preset, it needs to be hidden. I needed this base preset in order to define a common information for all the future package presets we are going to write soon, like CPAC generators. I want it to be zip because I'm working on a Windows machine. If I use another entry point, like from the left CMake UI panel, 
I can add another package preset by inheriting from the base I wrote earlier. Let's use another entry point and inherit again, creating a new package preset for release. This both will automatically inherit the zip generator. Something that is missing and the schema requires it is a configure preset. Because this is the debug package, it makes sense to associate it with a debug configure preset. And the release package preset to be associated with a release configure preset. Let's do the same for um, workflow presets. By creating from a configure debug. So this will be a debug workflow. And the wizard already wrote the first step for us. We only need to write the extra steps. I am thinking to add a build and the package step. Let's write also a release workflow. Let's create from an existing workflow preset like debug. This is a mechanism similar to inheritance. This way we end up doing only uh, a few minor edits. Now let's select a package preset and the workflow preset from the ones that we wrote. Release package, we do not see the debug package because the current configuration of the project is released and the hidden base preset is um, invisible by default. And the workflow, the workflows we can see both because um, the extension allows running a workflow that is associated with a different configure than the main state of the project. So I can decide either of them. The V6 preset support exists in VS as well, and it looks very similar, with just some variations in the UI specific to the Visual Studio overall design. Let's open in VS the same basic project that we created in VS Code earlier. It should configure, build and package with the exact same presets that we wrote out of the box. And done. So now let's quickly run a package on the workflow. Let's package the debug binaries since we are configured for debug. Here is the zip. And let's see how workflows are executed. The debug workflow, which configures for debug, builds the debug binaries, and then packages them into the zip. We can also run our package and workflow presets from another UI entry point, like in Solution Explorer, context menu on CMake presets JSON file. Here are the menus. Also in the same place, 
we can add new presets. Let's see how the predefined templates and wizards look like. Let's add a new package preset. We can add any other fields that we are interested in or modify the text that was written. And same for adding a new workflow preset. Well, this shows that the presets V6 support in both VS and VS Code is bringing more consistency and compatibility for code bases. This is the end of the demo. Let us know in the comments if you have any suggestions about how we can improve this experience or if you encounter any problems while using this support. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoy also other videos prepared by our engineers for the Pure Virtual Conference.